All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a big day. We are going to grade an LEQ today. I haven't decided which one. The other ones you'll get points for. You always get points for writing. Always get points. But I'm going to pick one here in a minute that we're going to grade today in class. <laughs> then I am going to teach you how to write a new LEQ today, which you're going to hate. It's going to be so much fun. CCOT, we're going for the hardest one. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, take out your LEQ prompts. Take out your three essays. You're going to need a scrap piece, uh, two scrap pieces of paper. <coughs> In order to be successful for today, ladies and gentlemen, you need to have two sheets of blank paper. You need to have three completed essay and your LEQ prompts. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need paper, I have stacks on stacks on stacks over here. I have plenty of options. Let's make sure everyone is clear on what the homework is for tonight. So look at your LEQ prompts and make sure everyone is clear what is for homework. Now, ladies and gentlemen, rule number one of writing week is don't show up without your essay. So tomorrow we're grading LE, uh, CCOT, so please keep in mind. So here we go. On your LEQ, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to be looking at, ooh, I want this one. <laughs> well, how about we do an easier one? Yes. All right, here we go. We're going to look at this one. Number one, it's an easier one. Silk Road, Continuities and Changes. Okay, looking at specific an uh, examples, analyze continuities and changes that occurred in long distance right along the Silk Road between the year 600 to 1450. We can handle that one. So, tonight, that is the essay you are writing. Is everyone clear? We are going to hustle through our grading of just one of the three. The other two we don't grade, you're still going to get points for. Everything you do in my class, you get points for. You see that, correct? But we're only going to grade one because I need to teach you how to write these essays. Is everyone clear? Because it's a different format. So, all right. What you're going to do is you are going to put your two pieces of paper, your three essays, in a pile. Two pieces of paper, your three essays in a pile, and hand it to someone who has not graded any of your essays this week. Quickly, the faster you go, the less you have to do on your own tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Trade with someone. Let's go. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. As soon as you get it, you're going to write LEQ at the top of the blank sheet. Let's go, write the rubric. Let's do it. At the top of the page, you are writing the rubric. about trees. Here we are now. Bacterial is also blue. Well, it does smell like Christmas. I'm passionate about Hawaii, which is why 99% of mine smell like Hawaii. What? What is the Prompt, correct groups, contextualization. What's the matter, Reagan? Reset prompt, correct, groups, oh, contextualization. Contextualization. You should have. Contextualization has been in every single one, my darling. That's what's talking about what's happening during that period. Is it, oh. That period. That's contextualization. 99% of the time during this period, you're going to talk about how trade increases. Months per new, you, can, you should have used it in all three of your essays. Yeah, when in doubt, talk something about trade. <laughs> Hi. It is ridiculous to say, but it will always score. It works. it works every single time. Like, we're not trying to make our lives harder here, people. We're trying to make our lives easier, despite the fact that you believe it. Now, you're going to have to write the content paragraph three times. You know that, right? Because there's three content paragraphs. You can handle this. That was quite a snarl you got there, Lauren. What? How about... How about above it, you write paragraph one, and then you write the point system next to it, and write three columns. Is that score? Is that better? Yeah. So then over here, you're going to write paragraph two, 
and then you go one point, one point, one point. And then you'll do three columns. How's that, you lazy turkeys? Okay, at the very top of the page, you are going to write their name really big in a big margin at the top. You are writing their name, whoever you are grading. They should have written their name on their essays because they're not idiots. Because, by the way, I have tons and tons of essays that do not have names on them, which I've recorded all the essays you've written so far, and I have tons of them with no name on them. So... At the top, you need to write their name really large. At the bottom of the page, write your name so I know who's grading who. At the very bottom of the page, you need three rows. I only have two on my sheet because I have it folded in half. You need to have three rows of paragraphs. Okay. So at the top of the page, you wrote their name really large. At the bottom of the page, you have written your name, so I know who is grading who, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like we should be grading. Let's do two Mongols. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Look for their Mongol essay, please. Look for their Mongol essay. Everyone is grading the Mongol essay. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to read their first et thesis essay. Their first e Hello. You're going to read their thesis paragraph now, please. And as you are grading, please score. If you have any questions on whether it scores or not, please raise your hand and I will tell you if it scores. Begin. So, as you are going, you are scoring on your rubric, obviously. Katie, have you finished scoring? Is it perfect? Pretty good? Okay. Context um, let's talk about correct groups. Who's got a good examples of good groups that will show the Mongols versus Sui versus Tang? What do you got, Joey? Uh, strong um, militarism. Okay. There's three groups there, boss. What are the three? Oh, oh um, um, government policies. Okay. And public Those are perfect examples, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see how they're nice and vague? And then in your essays, you can just easily chunk. The Pongols do this. The Sui or the Tang do this. The Mongols do this. The Sui or the Tang do that. Do you see what we're doing here? Okay. Contextualization. Who has a good contextualization? 99% of you wrote about trade, and I'm perfectly content with that. So, who here has a good contextualization? What do you got, Reagan? Uh, uh, does it have to be in China? It should be worldwide. So okay, no. so you said, uh, during the time of the Muslim Empire, it's modern for trade to move and to conquer uh, populism. There we go. That's okay. That's okay. What do you got, Sterling? So said all, so all the time in the Mongol Empire, Europe is being treated as a really dumb people. Guys, it shouldn't be talking about the Mongol government at all because it's part of the prompt. You should not be referencing the Mongols at all. You cannot. If they reference the Mongols, they can't get the point. They can't get the two points. They can't. You give them a point. No, I don't want any points. No. Hell no. Take them off. Okay. What do you got? Um, crusades are occurring in Europe. Perfect. I don't even care. Crusades, great answer. Don't care the rest. I do, but like, we're good. Evelyn. Um, if they weren't specific, did we give them one point or zero points? Zero. You're all or nothing on contextualization. We've been working on this for a while. What? But what do you mean if they say about Mongols? Yes. Because it's contextualization. You're showing that you understand what's happening in the rest of the region because all of your other essay is talking about the Mongols. So let's say they said, during the time of the Mongols, they expanded their power no. to it's wrong. Zero. Zero. Guys, you should be talking about the easiest answer in the world is during the time period, trade is booming throughout the world via Silk Road and Indian Ocean Basin, which is increasing the wealth and military strength. You can use that in every essay you wrote this weekend. Okay? It is a nice generic answer for this period. Okay. Score it. Let's move on to the content paragraph. You're reading content paragraph one. 
read through. If you have a question, raise your hand, Emma. Then we are taking out, we're going to bleed them up points in the end. Keep in mind, the faster we go, the easier life is today. Keep in mind, you should be scoring as you're going. What do you got? Can you say explanation of one side? So, like, for instance, they should be talking about the Mongols in this essay, or they should be talking about the sphere of the time. And they do the beach body yep. Right? Yep. Well, no, no, no. They should be, so the explanation of the group, so if they're talking about government, they're talking about the government, the unified, or whatever. If they're going to talk about the Mongols, how the Mongols are going to use Persians to run their government, then they're going to talk about how uh, the Tang are going to use Chinese bureaucracy. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's in the same paragraph. Of course, you're talking about government structures. And then they have one side of evidence for the Mongols. So they're going to say they're going to import Persians from the Iconid of Persia. Um, and they're going to come over and create a Persian bureaucracy that is based on whatever. And then on the other side, for the Tang, you're going to write that they're going to use the civil service exam in order to uh, find the correct officers. So it all should be in the same paragraph. So if they have a whole paragraph to... Uh, Madison, that is about just the Mongols, then they can't get the point for the other side, point for the other side. Well, they mentioned, like, the Tang dynasty is going to be because of the Yeah, but that's not government structure, or whatever your essay is about. As long as it ties and it works. As long as it, like, works. Of course, yeah. Okay. Of course. What do you got? If it's, like, all three groups in one, and there's... All three groups? Yeah. They do sweet Tang and... and yeah, is it confusing? That's fine. As long as they're providing evidence and they're supporting it, that's fine. I would. We're going to come back down to the bottom, and you're going to probably take off a couple of points there. Because it sounds confusing. It should be laid out very nice. What? Then you are taking off points. Because they're not following formatting, too. They're going to get blood on points. All right, here we go. If you're chatting, I'm assuming you're done. So you should be starting to look at content in paragraph two and start scoring that. Let's go, Emma. Um, so if they don't have both sides in each paragraph, it's wrong. It's not wrong. They're going to only get half the points. It's not wrong. I mean, they're still arguing some of it, but they, they can't get all the points. Okay, so everyone should be reading content paragraph two. You should be scoring it as you're reading it, ladies and gentlemen. You better not be handing out my points here, people. This evidence better be good. It should be clear. It should be explicit. If you have any questions on something with score, because I do look through them, if I find you're stealing my points, I'm coming after you, Sterling. So, for like a piece of evidence, this is like for the military one. It's like the Mongols are supposed to use military instruction, while the Tang use the method of rebellion. Why would the Tang use a rebellion? Rebellion would be anarchy. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I really like the Sui and the uh, Mongol. That's a bomb answer. However, the Tang component is weird. Yeah, that's fine. Then you should have ignored them because you could have used Sui. Uh, sort of, yeah. They're the ones who are going to use the really intense governing system. I would take off at least a point, yeah. Slav. Um, 
So they talk about the Union democracy and the Silk Road. Yeah. And they didn't, of they what, the Silk Road? Of Unified, fine. I thought you said discovered, and I was like, whoa, whoa. Unifying can then implement the police force and voting space. Perfect. And the Sui Dynasty, the canal. Yeah, that's perfect, man. That's perfect. They're going to both facilitate trade. Absolutely. All right, here we go. So paragraph two should have been scored. Let's look at paragraph three. Remember, the faster we move, the less homework you have tonight because you're writing a CCOT. You've never ran one before, and it's tricky, and you want my help planning. Let me tell you. So let's look at par content paragraph three. Let's score quickly, please. I mean, it's not going to be the best answer, but you got it. When you say Buddhism, you when you say they both have Buddhism, yes, they both exist with Buddhism, but they're not both supporting Buddhism. Yeah, they both had Buddhism. Religion is one I would have avoided. There's so much other things they had in common, like, you know, you could have talked about infrastructure, how the Mongols did none, all the Swedes did tons. You could have talked about government, you could have talked about military, you could have talked about cultural support. The Mongols had none, while the Tang was all culture. You know, there were so many other things I would have avoided religion. If I was you, I would have avoided it. What do you got? Oh, girl, we're going to take off points here in a sec. What do you got, Reagan? Um, so they, they use religion, but they use the Tang uh, it's okay. I would take off like one point because it's not the the evidence is not super clean because it's not truly supported by the government. Does that make sense? It's like there are Jews in the Middle East today. Would we say the Middle East is super Jewish friendly? No. No. But are there Jews there? Yes. yes. Okay, same type of thing. Okay, so you should have scored content paragraph one, two, and three. Is that correct? Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about formatting. Okay, if there is formatting errors, like it is not broken up into four paragraphs, you are taking off eight points, two points per paragraph. It needs to be broken up, ladies and gentlemen. At some point, you have to understand the formatting. Can we agree? Like, this is what we really nailed on the head last time we did this. So I'm hitting it hard. If it's confusing, like their examples are confusing and it's not well written, take off two points per confusing paragraph. So if it is minus two points per confusing paragraph, okay? So if it is just confusing, it is not written well in the format that you're expecting to see. Does that make sense? <laughs> Follows the rubric, and you need to take points off. Because, ladies and gentlemen, on the day of the exam, hopefully you see by following my rubric, it is a very clear structure, and we can move very quickly. If you are not following the format, it makes it very time-consuming. And it's a waste of your time, and you're not going to get the points. I'm trying to stop you from wasting time. So follow the format, score your points, and move on. So you have a total of how many is, without the formatting errors, what's the total points? 23? Okay, perfect. So the 23 is at the top. So write the grand score over 23. Then if you're taking off eight points or however points per paragraph, that's fine. Write it over 23 at the bottom. And then at the very top of the page, you're going to write what the score is. Okay. What do you got, Daniel? So, like, if, if all of the paragraphs are together, but they're indented, so you can... Really no. Tell they need to skip a space like they're supposed to. Doesn't it make it easier to read? Yeah. That's the point, Daniel. Okay. It's because we're trying to force them to do what they need to do. Skip a space, okay. make it clearer to read. It's easier for the grader to give you points. That's why we're doing it. We're not trying to be hard asses. We're just trying to make it easier for the points to get given. And if we don't practice now, guess what's definitely not going to happen on May 17th? Exactly. Slav. Okay. At the bottom, hold on, Slav. I, I, I do. At the bottom of the page, you're going to write two positive things and one constructive. Keep in mind, constructive means something they can learn from. Something they can learn from. Your formatting 
will cost you a ton of points. Figure out your formatting. That would be constructive. Can we agree? That's a simple, simple mistake. Your contextualization, you lost points on, and those are easy two points. Those are the types of constructive criticism you should be making. Constructive criticism is not saying, hey, you suck, drop AP World. Okay? Slav. So this thing right here, we take off these points? Or not? Space. Yeah. Because is it harder to read or easier to read? It's harder to read, man. What? Do you write the score and then you do minus eight? Yeah. Well, then at the very top, I want the score with minus eight. Okay. So whatever it is, minus eight. What? It doesn't score. it. first time they score, use it. It's the only time it scores. What? No, no, no. I want... Guys, the score at the very top of the page, okay? The score at the very top of the page is the final score. The final, final score. That's with the minus eight. Okay? I want it at the bottom saying minus eight if there is a minus. Like this person didn't lose formatting points. So I want it down here minus eight for formatting because I want them to know they lost formatting points. Does that make sense? Okay? So at the very top, I want final, final score. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to my instructions. They are going to be explicit. Okay. Oops. You are going to staple only the Mongol sweet hang essay to the rubric. Does that make logical sense? Yeah. You're only going to staple the rubric on top of the Mongol sweet and hang essay. You're going to keep the other two essays loose. Is everyone clear on that? As soon as you get the stapler, pass it. Okay, as soon as you get the stapler, staple and pass it. Let's go. You are only stapling the Mongol essay to the rubric. What? Tell them I hate them. But I guess you're just staple only the ones that you have to. No, there's a second sheet, is there? Tell them I hate them. Okay, three, two, one. While you're waiting for the stapler, you're going to share the score with the person who earned it. Go. Three. Two. One. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I am trying to get you to where you need to be for tonight. Okay. On that empty sheet that they handed you, you're going to start writing these notes down. You're going to pat, turn in everything at the end of the day. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are writing a CCOTSA tonight. They should have given you two blank sheets of paper. Here we go. You can hold on to yours, theirs, who cares? We're moving quickly because you have an essay tonight. We are writing a CCOTSA, which stands for Continuity and Changes Essay. Changes are new things that occurred during that period. Continuities. Are things that started before and will continue beyond this period. Okay, so a CCOT is Continuity and Changes Essay. 
where a changes are new things that occur during that period. So new things that are happening. Doesn't matter. Anything that's new, like dows and jukes are new, that is a change. Uh, the printing press is new. That's a change. Feudalism is new. That's a change. Okay? So anything that is for the first time we've ever mentioned it is new, that's a change. Then we have a thing called continuities. It is something that started at least the period before and continues till after. Ladies and gentlemen, which one do you think is harder? Yeah. It's awful. It is hard, which is why we've waited this long to start them. Okay. Continuities and changes. Your LEQ, CCOT, LEQ formatting. You're going to see that it's very similar to your LEQ. So, your thesis paragraph. Okay, you obviously restate. Prompt. You have your two or one continuities. And two or one changes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how many do you need to have total? Three. Three. But you need to have at least one continuity or two continuities or at least two changes or one change. Do we understand that? You have a grand total of three of them. Okay? And then, of course, you have your contextualization. Okay. So, content paragraph. Of course, we have our restate of the prompt. Then you have your explanation of continuity or change, whatever you're doing that period. Okay? Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If it's a continuity, if it's a continuity, you have to explain its start in a previous period. And how it continues in this period. Yeah. You see why I waited for this one? Okay. So, if it's a change, depending on what the paragraph is, okay, you explain why it starts during this period. Okay, so which one by far is the hardest? Continuity. Continuity, because it's essentially two points on top of the explanation. For the change, you have to explain why it starts in this period. Okay, then you have to provide evidence. And provide evidence of its use. So, if you're talking about a thousand jukes, okay, you can say that the Arabs are going to be using um, uh, dows in order to facilitate Indian Ocean Basin trade, uh, carrying goods, blah, 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 whatever, okay? You have to provide evidence. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is the same thing for three total content paragraphs. So... Depending on, ladies and gentlemen, if your first essay style is going to be continuities, do you have to do this one? No. Okay? So if you're doing a continuity paragraph, you only have to do this plus the evidence. Does that make sense what we did here? Okay? You, in your one paragraph, so in every par in in each content paragraph, you only... Discuss 
one continuity or change. Okay, so you have three body paragraphs and you're only talking about a continuity in one, a continuity in a second if you chose to do two continuities, punch yourself in the face if you decide that, uh, and then a change. Does that make sense? So you're only using in a paragraph. So unlike a regular LEQ, a compare contrast, do you have to have multiple things going on at the same time? No. If it's a continuity one, then you only use this and you ignore that. If it's a change one, you ignore that and you focus on that. Is everyone clear on how this works? Okay, so everyone understands what the formatting with the essay is supposed to look like. Okay, because this is what we're writing for the next two days. Yep, we're having a good time. Thank you for acknowledging it. All right, let's plan your essay, shall we? All right, here we go. Using specific examples, analyze the continuities and changes that occurred in long-distance trade along the Silk Roads between the years 600 to 1450. So, Silk Road. Here we go. We need continuities and we need changes. So we're going to brainstorm and we're going to come up with the best things. Keep in mind, our continuities, we have to explain from the previous periods to the current period. We also have to provide evidence. So here we go. What is a continuity or change along the Silk Road? Your hand should be up because the faster we move, the easier life is because you have to write this essay whether I help a lot or not. What do you got, Slav? Uh, you define the Silk Road Mongols. Mongols, is that a continuity or change? It is a change. There you go, Mongols. Unify Silk Road. Okay, there you go. So previous... Previous is what? What was happening on the Silk Road previously? Oh, we don't have to. Just kidding. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I'm doing it right, and then I mess it up. How fun. Okay, so changes. I have to explain why this is occurring. Why? Cade. Okay, that would be great evidence, but we're not there yet. Why? Guys, come on. What do you got, Emma? They covered or what? Conquered. They conquered all of Asia and Middle East. And Middle East. Okay, so what's our evidence going to be, Cade? Pony. And the what? Streamlined tariffs, fine. What else would be a good, strong one here? Joey? Police force would be a good one, too. Okay, got it. All right, what else do we got? So we got one change, zero continuities. Let's go, come on. Open up your notebook. Look, the faster you move, the better it is, ladies and gentlemen, because whether we're together or not, you're still writing this essay. Guys, what is something that stayed the same along the Silk Road? You can't write trade, people. You can't write trade. Shannon. No, it's too. It's like saying trade. Come on, come on, come on. Guys, who are the major traders on the Silk Road? Yeah. Arab traders are the core and the backbone of the Silk Road. So how about that for continuity? Now, we want to be careful we don't call them Muslims the whole time because Mus they're only Muslims in 610, which would make them not a continuity. Can we agree? So, we want to be careful. we got to call them Arab traders. Are the major facilitators of silver trade. Okay. Previously, what do we have? <coughs> who are going maybe a dynasty an empire that was also trading pre 600 what do you got <coughs> we're calling them Arabs though so you can't say Romans or Arabs Guys, come what is a what is a Middle Eastern dynasty, people? The Gupta are in South Asia. Oh my god. 
Hi, I taught you a bunch of Middle Eastern empires. What do we got? Umahad are going to be in six there after Islam starts. Abbasid. It's after Muhammad. So the first caliphate. Oh my God. Go back to your ancient notes, people. Who is kicking it with the Greeks and the Romans? Persians. Okay. The Persians traded with what is the major dynasty during Roman times in China? By the way, this is on your midterm, and you bet your bottom dollar it's on your AP exam. So, no, this out, no. Oh my God, no. Guys, the Han. Okay, the Persians are going to trade with the Han and the Romans. So do we see silk trade happening here? <laughs> yes. What is our evidence? Okay, you can say evidence from this period, which is the Mongol period. What is some evidence that Arab traders are on the Silk Road? Hmm? Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. You can say Islam became most popular religion. On Silk Road, six hundred to fourteen fifty, overthrowing what previous one? Christianity is not in China, people. No. Oh, my God. Have I taught you anything? Have we just been twiddling our thumbs? Buddhism, people. Buddhism. Oh, my God. You do know your midterm's coming, like, quickly, right? Cool. And that is, uh, has, like, everything on it? Cool. 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 Okay. Changes. Another change. Let's be done with continuities, you people. Yeah. Let's, let's just walk away. Okay, changes. What's another change? The Mongols unify the Silk Road. What's another change that is happening on the Silk Road? Come on. It can be an invention. It can be a tool. It can be a thing. I don't care. Madison. Absolutely. Spread of Black Plague. All right, so who can explain what is happening during this period with the Black Plague? Come on. What do you got, Cade? That's literally what we just talked about, so no. Emma? No. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, The what we're focusing is on Black Plague. How about, where does it start? China. Let's go there. Ashlyn. China, Central Asia. Begins in Mongol China, which we can use what? Throw in a little bit of evidence here. Yan Dynasty. Oh, geez, people. Yan Dynasty begins in Mongol China, spreads through... Silk Road trade. Okay, what is our evidence going to be? Huh? I can't hear you. Okay, cool. Do you know what year it reaches zero? So then, no. It can't be used. What's our evidence? Do you know exactly how many? Twenty-five million. Twenty-five million die in Europe. 
you're a balloon. Okay? It, guys, what is also, what is a better piece of evidence? What is an outcome of the Black Plague? End of feudalism. Ends feudalism. Ends feudalism. There we go. Whoa, ski broski. All right. What? You can choose two continuities. You always, you have to have a total of three. I would always do one continuity and two changes. That's what I would do. But sometimes, I guess, you, if you were really excited about it, you could do it. All right, take out a sheet of paper. Here we go. We're getting further than I thought. Let's do it. Here we go. All right, looking at my essay. Here we go. Continuities and changes in Silk Road. Road train between the years six hundred to fourteen fifty can be seen in the continued use of Arab traders. <coughs> Mongols and the continuous of Arab traders and the uh, the change the changes and the changes of Mongols controlling the Silk Road and the spreading of the Black Plague. What comes next? Contextualization. So what would be a good example of contextualization? You can't, because it's the whole essay is Silk Road Trade, so no. You can't use it, because it's the whole essay is based on trade, so you can't talk about it. Come on, contextualization. This is not a new skill I'm teaching you. What is something big that is happening that is generic and big? Emma, what about the Crusades? Cool, no. If you want to talk about something else about the Crusades and use the Crusades as evidence, that works. Hi, if you're not going to help me, I'm not going to help you. What do you got, Claire? Feudalism is happening in Western Europe. And? And China. No. Japan. Okay. Feudalism. Feudalism has begun in Europe and in Japan <laughs> because a decentralized government. is able to adjust more quickly to attacks and is more stable to changes. Perfect. Done, done, done. Okay, so our, we have our restate, we have listed our continuity and changes, we have contextualization, so our thesis paragraph is done. Okay, so skipping to paragraph, our uh, first content paragraph, so restate the prompt. Continu uh, a continuity. Continuity that occurred in long distance. Let's trade along the Silk Road between years of 600 to 1450 
is the continued use of Arab traders. Done. Now I have to explain explanation of the continuity of change. Okay? So, Arab traders will facilitate the movement of goods across the Asian continent. to the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. There you go. I've explained what do we mean by Arab traders. There we go. So, if it's a continuity, which is what this paragraph is, I have to explain its start in a previous period. Good thing we've already planned it, correct? So, previously, to 600, the Persians, parentheses, Arabs, started trading with the Romans and the Han, and the Han in China. Okay, so this trade relationship there you go. So this trade relationship will facilitate the start of the Silk Road. That was gonna be my next thought. Then you have to explain how it continues in this period. Well we already got it. Evidence, uh, Persian, it's gonna just continue with the Muslims trading. We got the evidence. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you feel like that's a pretty good start. Do we feel like we know what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you are just finishing this essay tonight for homework. Is everyone clear? This is the only essay you have tonight. You need to finish it. Does everyone feel like we have a pretty good start? You know where we're going? Yeah. Okay. Yes, oh, put your essays in the front. Can we give this other spelling? I want everything. I want all three. No, I don't want the planning. Here we go. In the front, ladies and gentlemen, you have your graded LEQ and then the other two in another pile. Goodbye. Thank you. Sorry. I feel like we got a lot done.